Hi, everybody. We're back. Another episode of the Moronic History Podcast. It's been a minute. We apologize. I don't. <laughs> I have zero remorse. I am sorry. Rumbly would rather see you guys thrown at a pit of fire. Uh, uh duh, obviously. Our, I am I'm the host that will tuck you in at night. Rumbly's the one that will kick you into a moving car. I'm I'm I yeah, if there's a car coming, I'm, you're you're getting kicked right into it. I'm sorry. All right. Not really. I'm not sorry at all. I'm I'm sorry. I apologize on his behalf. He will continue to do this the rest of the thing. Yep. But I have something to let, let's let's what are we do what are we talking about? We're talking about what happens when religions argue about very simple things, the immovable ladder. So yeah, the, when religions argue about very simple things, this happens. Oh, mm, weird. Know? It's almost like religion. Yeah, it's almost like when you get a bunch of religious fanatics in a room and you tell them your god isn't real. They tend to kill people. But th we're not talking yeah. about anything that dark today. We're talking about something that's a little more goofy. So, but let's let's talk about history and religion. Religious history. Um, My favorite. So, after the death, so before the death of Christ, uh, Judaism was like the only religion. It was the only Abrahamic religion. But after the death of Christ, uh, Catholics kind of popped up and they held power, held power for a very long time. But then, no, they held powder. They held they, they, they held gunpowder. Just it's they true. Just, yeah, they just held the gunpowder right just, there. They had it. They were ready. They were ready. They didn't know what to use it for yet, but they had it. But they they didn't know what they were going to use it for, but they had it. Just in case. But uh, just in case looks at Hitler. Um, a lot of there have been a lot of schisms within the church. So many, but it is important, so we're going to talk about it just a so couple. Many, so many that we don't have time to explain. <laughs> yeah, we will show you. I'll show you something later. I, this abomination that I found. I'll show you it. But uh, all you have to know is that another, a major split off that happened before the Reformation was Eastern, uh, the Orthodoxy split off, being both Oriental and Eastern. But that will be important later. So, let's talk about the church, because this thing revolves around a church, a very specific one. I'm going to mispronounce church. this because it is Middle Eastern, and I speak... Not that. I don't speak that. Well, I, Middle Eastern isn't a language. I don't speak... I assume it would be... Middle mean, Eastern, yes. I don't language. speak Middle Eastern, yes. Uh, the Church of the Holy... All, the, all, all, all of the Iranis just got really mad at us. All the Iranis, all of the Pakistanis... Is Pakistan the Middle... Yeah, I'd say Pakistan's the Middle East. Kind of. Oh, we... Oh, wait, no, no, no. We're backing up. We're backing up because this is a great time to talk about what I wanted to. Oh, okay. Back up. So as of recording, what it, what is it, May 5th? 6th? Yes, it's 6th. Um, yeah. King Charles III was crowned the king of Great Britain, Northern Ireland, and the surrounding nations. Um, what, is the, what is the podcast's opinion on the monarchy? I, I cringe, yeah. And, I mean, if I say any more, I'll get shot. But... Yeah, nothing that is safe to say on YouTube. So here's my exactly. Here's my issues with it. One, I don't like the idea of having a monarch. Period. Even though it has no actual powers, but also in like the the constitution of. The United Kingdom. It literally says the people derive the power of governance from the king or queen, who derives that power from God. So does that mean? Because the the, the king is God. Also... Yes, the the king huh. derives his power from God, because he's also the head of the English Church. Mm. Oh my God. Okay. Let's get through this, the and then we're brain, gonna... brain. Oh, oh God! I... The podcast opinion on the monarchy is not one we can say without getting shot. Yeah, um, there have been a lot of a, a lot of arrests in the United Kingdom against anti-monarchy people, which is very cringe because there are very valid reasons to be mad at the monarchy. 
very valid reasons. Do you remember when Queen Lizzie uh, uh, died? Um, when the when the gracious old queen died and went to hell. I'm so the, sorry. The entire like country of the UK shut down, and that pushed so many people's like hospital trips, just months out ahead with people who needed that care. But you know, because they suck the boots of the monarchy, they just they had to do it. It's like, hey, guess what? <laughs> guess what? Your Cringe. cancer, your cancer treatment that you needed tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry, the, the old, the old hag and the monarchy died. Sorry, you're gonna have to. Oh my god. Okay. Let, let's. Okay, anyways. Let's... Yes. Hey, just butting in here for a quick second. I know this is probably annoying, but let me just do my spiel quick. Uh, if you're enjoying the content so far, I highly recommend that you hit the subscribe button. Me and Rumbly put a lot of effort into these, and we really enjoy when you guys show support for them. So if you could do that, that would mean the world to us, and there will be more Moronic History episodes coming out in the near future. So just keep that in mind. And with that, I hand you back over to the podcast. Anyways, uh, church. 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 Uh, the church of the Holy... Yes, religion. We hate it. Yes. Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Uh, it's a church in the old city of Jerusalem, and it is part of, well, it's disputed, actually. It's some, I would consider it part of Palestine, but, you know, Israel being Israel kind of de facto owns it. The original mm. building was made in the first century as a temple by the Roman Emperor Hadrian. I don't know which one. I don't even know. I assume... I assume the one we're talking about right now is the one in the gray. Uh, it's the one on the I right. I did not mean to move that. The one on the right. The but one on the, the one right in the is, gray. The one on the right is the modern one. The the original one, well, we'll get into that. It's they it was basically it's been raised multiple times. It's just they have the same name. Uh after the legalization of Christianity, Constantine the Great had a pagan temple that was there replaced with the church. It was destroyed in a fire in 1614, and then was under Islamic Islamic ugh, English why rule for a while, and was protected, which was weird. Uh, it was damaged by earthquakes like three different times, and it was later completely destroyed by the order of a caliph during campaigns of Christian prosecution, as you do. Anyway, what? What? I, I spaced off. Oh, uh, basically, it got <laughs> three earthquakes, kind of ravaged it. It then it got destroyed by the order of a caliph. A uh, caliph is kind of a leader in the um, Islamic faith, and <clears throat> it was destroyed during Christian prosecution, which, well, you know, it was kind of during that time in the middle east christian prosecution was pretty rampant but nothing yeah. to justify what would come uh during yes. nego negotiations with the Br uh not the british the byzantines the church was ordered to be rebuilt and so like the church would be rebuilt in jerusalem and a mosque yeah. would be opened up in constantinople which you know that's kind of cool, right? Like, yeah. Like, hey, we'll open up a, we'll rebuild your church as long as you open a mosque. I mean, I mean. So then we get to talk yeah. about the Crusades. Uh, oh boy. What it was for a uh, Deus Falk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Nothing of the Christian prosecution in the uh, Middle Eastern states necessitated the. Crusades and all the Crusades failed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously, we all know this. Yes, so it's basically the whole point of the Crusades was to get to the Holy Land, Jerusalem, and pray in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre because that was it. I'll explain it in a bit, but it was it's very important to the Christian faith. Very like. During, very. It's oh, it, it's very important. It, I will explain. I mean, like the importance of it. We cannot. We don't have enough time to explain in the podcast alone the importance of it. That's how important it was. 
Um, so during the Crusades, not a lot happened to it, like physically. It was just kind of there. But the Ottomans, just, eh. yeah, during the Ottoman takeover, that when they took over that those lands, it was it was worked on and had a limestone burial bed for a purpose that we'll talk about in a bit. That was the main thing that they had. The main thing that happened mm-hmm. during this period is a decree in 1853 made it so that all sects within the church, there's multiple sects, meaning like divisions, would have to agree and approve to change anything within the church. This, it was then transferred to the rule of the British Mandate after I, probably the First World War. And Maybe. Eh, it was know. given renovations. It was then in the conflict between Israel and Jordan and, oh, during the Six Days War, yeah. And the last yeah. thing was that in 2022, they found a really cool looking um, style of decorations from 1149. You can kind of see it. It's right. It's that bottom right picture. They found that. They were doing renovations and they just found that. The same the little metal thing, like scaffolding is in front of? Yeah, that, that thing. Oh. Um... Yeah. It, it's really cool. Huh. The one thing that churches and that kind of stuff brings is that usually you can preserve a lot of um, history within them and decorations, which that's one of the other reasons. But why is this church so important? This is the question. Basically, Jesus. So, Jesus H. Christ, I don't know if... Is H. his middle name? I don't think he has a middle name. Eh. So he was crucified. I'm a Christian, I wouldn't know. He was a crucified, you know, pretty important. And the tomb that we talked about earlier, the tomb in the whole Church of the Holy Sepulchre was Jesus's tomb. That's where he was, where he supposedly Ooh. was, supposedly was buried and resurrected. Um, yeah. The opinion of the podcast is well, I guess I guess I can't say the opinion of the podcast. My opinion on it is that. Uh, Gods and deities don't exist, but I don't know about Rumbly. Gods and deities do, don't exist. Okay, so we're in agreement on that. I only um, believe in up. In up. In space. Space. So, basically, very important, because this is yeah. the spot where the Christian faiths, excluding... Well, no, because that's Judaism. The Basically, where their Messiah was... Not killed, but buried and reborn. Like that's it's very important to control that area. Very. So there are six different sects that we get to talk about who have control over the church. Going from left to right, we have the Roman Catholic Church, which is like the big papa, like they are the big wigs. Big, big boy. Yeah. The big guy. They're based out of the Vatican and the, you know, the Pope. I don't need to explain what the Roman Catholic Church is. Well, no, no you don't. No. Uh, The next one is the Greek Greek Orthodox Church, which is a sect, it's the big honcho of the Eastern Orthodox. This is what most people in the East follow, this like, um... That this is what people outside of Rome, the Catholic yeah. and Protestant belief, believe. This is what they're. Then this, we have that, that's them. Yes. Um, where am I? Uh, Eastern oh, postalithic Church. Uh, Armenian. It's a it's, it's an Oriental Orthodox, which is a different type of Orthodox from the Eastern, but similar. Uh, the now going down to the lower three, moving left to right, we have the Syrian Orthodox Church, which is another Oriental one, and similar to the Armenian, just from different countries. Mm. Then we have Cops, C O P T S, which is a uh, I'm trying to remember. It's a basically it's a bunch of scattered. It's based out of Egypt, and they're basically a bunch of scattered religious folk who believe that... I'm sorry, I this I wrote these notes a very long time ago. This is a po- scuff podcast. I wrote these a long time ago. Give me a minute. Okay. Coptic Oriental Orthodox Christians. Um, it's very large in Egypt, and basically it's their 
version of Christianity. It's a lot older than most people would say because it moved down into Egypt before many of the trade routes opened there. So it's very old. Yeah. And then the last one, I know this is very heavy and it's very hard to uh, get. I apologize to you, Rumbly. This is not one where you can make a lot of uh, comments on. No, not really, because I, I have zero clue what you're talking about. Yeah, no, it, you can start commenting in a bit. This is like the prelude. This is what. Uh, the last one is the Ethiopian Orthodox. <sighs> I am too white for this. Tiwahedo Church. Um, and this is this is what the church is divided up. Thank you to user Estin Horto on r slash Catholicism for this wonderful map of who owns what in the church. Oh, God. Yeah, you can see that it is... Dude, the borders of this church are more messed up than some of the map borders I've ever seen. It looks like the Balkans. Except worse. Yeah. Okay, so let, let's break this down. So the gray areas are Greeks, Latins, and Armenians. Latins, I assume, is the Roman Catholic. So that's kind of like a shared area. So uh, the Greek Orthodox mm. controls, mm. I would say, a majority. They have Chapel of St. James, Chapel of St. John, Chapel of the Four Forty Martyrs, the Orthodox Monastery, the Athlokians, and the Greek Calvary. So they own a lot. Uh, hold on, the Greek Calvary? It's right above the Chapel of St. Michael to the left. I need to figure out a way where I could like draw on yeah. the slides so I can illustrate where I'm pointing at. I'm going to work on that for the next one cuz yeah, I you say here and I'm like uh the Armenians control uh, the Chapel of St. Helena, Shrine of the Three Marys. Yeah. And then Ethiopia so the looks like the Armenians control the no cops controls the least easily. Oh, Maybe, yeah. No, 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 no. no. The Syrians do, actually. Look at that. They only have that one little section. The one room. Yeah, that one room next to the rotunda. Yeah, I see it. The one room. So it looks like it's the most is the Lat is the Greek Orthodox, the Latins, and the Ethiopians. They control the most. So that's I'm just, just surprised that the Ethiopians control all that much. Yeah, I'm actually really, that's interesting. I wonder why that is. Mm hmm. Um, I, yeah, I've actually known. Because, like, all of this division is from years and years and division upon division. Nobody really knows why people control what. It's completely. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just saw this point. Uh, seven Arches of the Virgin. <laughs> what? Seven Arches of the Virgin. It is up on the, up towards the top but below the courtyard. And there's also prison. Oh, I, I, I'm not going to try and find this. Oh, I think Prison of Christ must be the tomb. Okay, mo moving on. We're going to get lost. So this is the unholy thing that I was talking about earlier. This is like all of Christianity's breakdown. You can see Judaism is the main poppy, and then it breaks all everything else down. So yeah, let's talk. The Catholics are the big papas of the Christian faith, and they've been around a long, a damn long time. Uh, the, this is we're just talking about like what each sect is. This yes. is what we're talking about. I'm not going to explain the Roman Catholic Church. You guys know this. Uh, Eastern Orthodox faith is a they had main disagreements with the powers of the Pope and some political agreements. That's why they split off. The Armenian Apostolic Church came earlier as a part of the Council of Acleodon? It's not important. A lot of this stuff is very, like, you can make entire books on why this stuff happened, but I'm just gonna be... But we condensed all those books into, like, one paragraph. Yes. So... Me trying to condense the entire, like, religious history of Christianity down into a slide is like trying to fit a trumpet inside of a um, backpack. No, it's like trying to fit a trumpet into 
a box eight inches across. Yeah. It's just, it, oh, God. So the Syrian Orthodox is part of the or Oriental. I kind of talked about this. Um, yeah, no, I, we, we kind of talked about this. I don't know. I put it twice. Uh, but yeah, you can see all the fun parts. You can see the Mormons, the Quakers, the Baptists. Ooh. Let's play all a game. Yeah. Let's play a game. Who's the worst? Who do you think is the worst on here? Hmm. Ooh, I think I I think I'd I have to give. I cannot to... read any of this. You, really? Okay. Um, I'd have to give it to Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah. It's, it's between them and the Mormons, I think. Yeah. <laughs> One of the two. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that. Okay. So this is where we get to talk about the funny parts. Oh boy. So, so we have that decree in 1853 where all sects of the church have to agree on if something is changed. This uh -huh. is still in effect, and it leads up to this very day. This leads us to the topic of the video, and for one thing, this is kind of an example of what happens. During a conflict between the cops and the Ethiopians, a chair was moved 20 centimeters, and a fistfight ensued that sent 11 people to the hospital. A chair. A chair. Moves 20 centimeters equals 11 people in the hospital. Yeah. So it was... It was that it was makes like sense. Huge tensions between the cops and the Ethiopians. And there was one guy sitting out to make sure that the... I think an Ethiopian was sitting out on a chair, but he wanted to move it into the shade. Yeah. So that he could not, you know, cook. But they, the cops saw that as a, basically what happens here is that it's called status quo. Nobody wants to change anything in fear of fights breaking out. And obviously they do. So they saw that yeah. as a transgression. This fight. Yeah. 11 people in the hospital. Bro, like, church, religion's weird. Religion is like, very. Like, they'll, they'll, they'll fist fight over anything. Like, oh, you moved that chair 20 centimeters. What is that in inches? What is that in freedom units? Freedom units? I don't, I don't know. I don't even think that's... Let me find a ruler. That Wait, is hold on. less than... Oh, what is that? 20 centimeters. That that's would... 7.8 inches. 7.8 inches. It's They didn't even move it a foot. Oh, my God. They, they, they moved it three quarters of a foot. And fist fight ensued. Eleven people sent to the hospital. None of those people died, by the way. I just want to mention that. But eleven people sent to the hospital. Over a chair moving not even a foot. So let's talk about the funniest part. The immovable ladder. The uh -huh. time period of when it was placed isn't really known, but the first recorded instance of it was in 1728. It was used by a mason who was doing work on the church, and he just left it up there. Um, okay. Your assumption would be, oh, a worker left it there so we can just remove it, right? You don't want it stinking up the place. Yeah. No. Uh, they, because if they wanted they to just... remove it, they'd have to get all six sects of the church to agree to move it. Oh, my God. So the ladder has sat there for at least 300 years due to the fact that the Catholics, Eastern Orthodox, and Orientals hate each other so much that they can't agree to move a ladder. This is why I, I'm never getting into religion. This is why. If you move... It's too stupid for my mind to comprehend. There was an attempt to move the ladder. Like, uh, they... But then he got shot. <laughs> the Pope. The Pope ordered his hitman. The hands. Pope was waiting with his sniper rifle, pointing at that ladder for hours until someone tried to move it. I imagine there... What happens is that... um. They t they started talking about it, and then people were like, "No, they they cannot agree to move the ladder at all." So if somebody tries to move it, it you could start a holy war with with the ladder. So what if I a oh, a nobody? We'll like, get to that. I don't even I don't even like take part in anything. Like I'm not religious in any way. What if I move the ladder? Because then what? We'll talk about that. Oh boy. So. The spot is owned by the Armenians. Like, where it's at is owned by the Armenians. Uh-huh. But 
it still needs the approval of all the other sects. Let's, uh, I'm going to just give you a little bit of context on this picture. Top left is from 1728, that is the earliest we can see, and it has a depiction of the ladder up in the window, so 1842 moving to the right, 1885 moving to the right again, and then moving down to the colored picture of 2011. So it's still there to this very day. I so, haven't moved. No, not, not even an inch. Oh, wait, did I move my... I took my slide out. I'm an idiot. Okay. Well, talk... we'll talk about it while on this slide. So the plan is simple. We book tickets to the Holy Land. Pretty expensive, but whatever. We, st we remove the ladder. We don't destroy it. We just move it, like a foot to the right. Causing This will then cause the church to fall into a state of chaos and turmoil. When the fighting's over, we establish a new church called the Church of Moronic History. And instead of reading the Bible, they just have to listen to this podcast until they can recite it word for word. Bam, holy war. And that's how moronic history caused the third holy war. <laughs> Dude, that would be the best episode. We, we, we make our own episode. We make our own episode on how we caused the third holy war. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be the third. I think it would be like 85th, but yeah. Yeah, you get the, you get, you get the idea. Like, Rumbly, we're out of episodes. I, I've, we've, it's like episode 500 uh, of this. We're like, we're I, nine, I, 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 holy we're, war, we need to start it. Yeah, um, we're out I'll of episode down. ideas. Um, what if we cause a holy war? Go, go, go. Write it down, write it down. Oh, I, yeah. So that get baby driver involved, just so we can have a getaway. Of course, of course, because like, if you move that thing, you are going to die. Yes, but what if? But what if? These are I paid off all of the sections in the church, right? Mm -hmm. And then I moved the ladder. I yeah, just without, take it away. But you I don't, take it down. But you don't tell any of them that you paid each other. I don't. Yeah, I don't tell anybody that I paid anybody off. And the second someone opens their mouth about being paid off, they get holy shot. war. It's a holy war because that, you know it's you're a not holy war. You're not really supposed to accept bribes, of course. Of course. Okay. Because <laughs> they haven't done that in the <laughs> in the past. <clears throat> Rome, Holy Roman Empire. <clears throat> Man, damn. Sorry, that cough. So as a recap, because religion is dumb and people cannot agree on the very simplest of things. A ladder that was placed there by accident, and left there by accident, has stood there for 300 years and will probably never be moved. Until either the ladder or the building becomes dust. Yeah, until, until the world ends in nuclear hellfire, or I guess the rapture. I guess if the rapture comes, and they were right all along. Yeah, unless Antichrist comes back. Then... Imagine that's, that's, Jesus, that's what Jesus does. He did, no, Satan is just like, he comes up from the depths and he's like, I must cause a little chaos. How must I do that? Kill the Pope? Kill the Move queen? the ladder. Yeah, kill the Queen? And one of his demons is like, sir, I have, a, I have an idea. Dude, 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 you can just move that ladder. You can just move that ladder. That's not going to work. Go try and try it. He moves the ladder like half Like an inch, one inch. Half an inch and the, the church just starts on fire immediately. Molotov huh. cocktails flying. That was easier. That was easier than I thought it was going to be. Well, I'll be damned. Yeah, he's just like cackling as he recedes back into the floor. Like he's got that maniacal, like, <laughs> finger clapping that every villain does. Yeah, the one and where he, you... he's, got, he's got the cackle and the smile. And the... Yeah, you tap your fingers and... together. Yeah. It just... <laughs> exactly. Gets back on his gamer chair and goes back on the Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Satan does in his free time. He plays Fortnite, he does causes a holy war, and goes back to playing Fortnite. Exactly. It, it, it's a fun uh, hobby he likes to do. So, recap, religion bad. Moving on. I have no idea what's going on here. Good luck, Rumbly. It's time for my segment, the one that everybody has been waiting for for years. I don't know. This is like this is like conspiracy theory meets side tangent, okay? And you'll find out when we flip the next slide. Now. Are we talking about UFOs? Yes. Yeah, rah. All right. All right, so let's get into 
the side tangent part first. Quick question, Severon. Yeah, what up? When do you think the first UFO sighting was? Okay. I'm well. Okay, up until like the like BC era, most people would have just said that was the gods. So I'm gonna guess like 1700s. No, way off. Oh god, what what? June twenty fourth, nineteen forty seven. We what was the first UFO sighting allegedly? My my brother in Christ. So we, so so yes, two years after World War Two, people were like, "Hey, guess what? Aliens." Aliens. Yeah, we defeated Hitler, yeah. but have we defeated yeah. aliens? It's but have aliens come down? What about alien Hitler? <laughs> what about alien Hitler? I, what then, Jews? Because like that I, was a I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> Your move, Jews. <laughs> Checkmate, idiots. Good chuck me. But real quick, are they real or are they not real? Aliens? Aliens? Um, possibly. My, but let's okay. talk about the probability. Let's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like how many how many terrestrial planets have we actually found? Terrestrial being like Earth like. Ones that we can Ones that we can live on? Um, there's not a lot, but there's enough. Yeah. How many terrestrial planets? No. Are there in universe? Sorry, we're we're looking this up as we go. Oh. Okay, that's not. You're not helping. Oh, wait, shoot. Uh, uh disclaimer. Uh, the wait. This isn't conspiracy, and it's kind of innocuous. But let, I'll say it anyways. Uh, the Moronic History Podcast does not endorse any of the conspiracies brought forth on this segment, unless we say otherwise. Thank you. All right. I okay, so, uh, we have only found, like, maybe a few hand handful of hundreds of Earth-like planets that have the same conditions as Earth. Yeah, didn't we find but scientists one? Be but scientists believe... That there are possibly hundreds of quintillion Earth-like planets. Well, I mean, the universe is pretty damn quintillion. Big. Yeah, the universe is pretty damn. It's big. still a mind-boggling number. Oh, it's quintillions is like I, whatever you're picturing in your head, like multiply by factors of ten, because like your mind cannot yeah. comprehend quintillion. Nobody's exactly no, no 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 no. Our brains can barely comprehend a billion. Yeah. A billion is like, and a quintillion is how many billions? It's because it's it's so factors a, of a 10. billion is a hundred trillions, and quintillion is a hundred trillions. And a hundred trillions is a quadrillion, and a hundred quadrillions is it's like it it it's it's a never ending. That's that's thousand. That's one thousand billions. It is yeah. No, like, contact. like we said, incomprehensible. Didn't no, they find a planet? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Didn't they find 1, a planet that was like, okay, so scientists have a rating how they rate planets on livability. Earth is like an eighty-four. It's like uh, climate, landscape, materials. That's kind of the stuff. Didn't they find one that was better rated for life? Uh, let me find it. Let me. The podcast that okay, does so this research on the air. We've we've actually recently found a new Earth-like planet. Its name is TOI seven hundred E. Yeah, they're very, they're very scientists. Like, they they used to. Um... Yep. But I think the one you're talking about is it's a Kepler one. I know. Yeah, yeah, I think it was a Kepler. Much. I think it was a Kepler. It was a Kepler, but I can't remember the names and everything Dude, else. Naming planets used to be so cool. They name it like after the gods. Um, and now we're just like the, the star it orbits. I guess it. And I guess some it, arbitrary numbers. It makes sense because like there's only what eight planets in our solar system, so we can kind but of like, with that. But, but like you, back to the. But if you sorry. find a, if you find a cool planet, let's give it a cool name. Yeah, I like I like how they did Kepler though. Kepler's a good name. Kepler's a good name. 
I guess skipping. if the star is named good, it really doesn't matter, but, you know, the So, I think is... the one you're talking about, Sevron, is Kepler 452b. Yeah, could be right. Because astronomers say that that planet in particular is, like, in the Goldilocks zone of their of its star. That, yeah. Which means temperatures are, like, more suitable for life than here on Earth. Yes, that is the planet. That's the planet like, where... Like, perfect weather... All year round, doesn't matter where you are. Yes, that's the planet. It has a better livability. There's like a, it's, it's like, it's like you're playing a hearts of iron index. four game. There's a scale. I don't yeah. know. It's like you're playing a hearts of iron four about. game. Yeah, it's exactly. But here's the thing: we can't get to these planets because, uh, it's they're light years. They're like light, light, light. We can't. Let's not even get into the conversation of light years because Jesus Christ, is that too many? Oh yeah, uh, light years is a measure of um, time, not distance. No, yeah, no, it's a measure of time and distance. It's the amount of time light takes to get there, but it's also a matter of distance. Isn't it the? Isn't it the? It's the time. What? Oh God! Now I'm. Uh, now you got me. Now you got me. Now you got me fucked up. Uh, no, light. I, I, know, I know what you're like trying to say. Year definition. Okay, so okay. Kep- a yeah, unit Kepler... of astronomical distance equivalent yeah. to the distance that light travels in one year. Okay, so it's the so it is a measure of distance and time, but it's the it's both. Yeah, it's both. Okay, so I was wrong. Uh, just disregard. Yeah. So the K- Kepler four fifty two b is currently fourteen hundred light years away from us. So, so pretty damn far. Yeah. Oh, uh, just for context, the yeah. amount of distance that light travels in a light year, how far? It's like almost 300,000 kilometers per second per hour, actually. 300,000 kilometers per hour or second. I don't remember. Yeah, let me check. Uh, do, 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 do. It is... 5.879 times 10 to the 12th power miles. So... A lot more than I was thinking. I was thinking seconds. I was thinking seconds. Yeah. So very big. I was thinking seconds. So very very big. Very big. Yeah. But anyways, off track from the UFO topic. This is a side tangent. We, this is our podcast. We can do what Literally, we want. Literally, this is our podcast. You're here to listen. We're here to talk. If you're still listening to this, this is your fault. And thank you. And thank Sincerely. you. Sincerely. We like, appreciate it. We, we really much appreciate it. If you're still listening now, uh, thank you. Thank you. But uh, uh, anyways, aliens, are, do aliens. they exist? Do they not? <laughs> are, the, are the UFOs real or not? They're putting chemicals in the water to turn the frogs again. <laughs> but no, on a real topic, though, um, there was this one conspiracy theory. Now we're going to get into the conspiracy theory, theory side. My favorite. That is that... Um, Area 51, right? Then mm-hmm. we're going to start here, but there, there, there's like a big, like, I kind of believe in this one because it kind Ooh. of makes a lot of damn sense. Interesting. Let's hear it. So, Area 51 is known for like, oh, they're harboring aliens. Yeah, they're oh, har- they have all this, oh, blah, 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 right? Yeah. Like, they got UFOs and everything. But one, but one, like, American Air Force flyer was flying one, uh, one day, it was like noon-ish, possibly three i don't remember the time and he was just flying he was just cruising just scoping areas right making sure nothing was fishy and he sees this disc like thing that wasn't like it didn't appear to be human made it didn't appear to be rocky it actually appeared to be made out of some form of metal fly straight in front of him was this? like pretty clearly you can tell like something Something's fishy, or you was, know, like. Was this the one that was years ago, or is this the one that was this? Year? This was like, this was like one of the recent ones. Okay, yeah. And a... I, the only reason I believe it is because they wear like you know head cameras, just so that way they can be monitored and yeah, see they, like what they saw and whatnot. They and basically have GoPros. you you can't edit that photos because that goes straight to the government. You cannot you cannot edit them. You cannot find them. You can edit them, but uh, the you can edit the them, but they are were... not going to edit at that because they want to keep that. Yeah. But like it, it was like this UFO shaped object that just flew in front of him, and almost hitting him. I remember, I, as, I remember the one you're talking about. But there's as he's going like, 
however fast it was going. I don't remember. That was probably Mach 1, Mach 2. Uh, probably, but, like, it was going, like, significantly faster than him. Like, yeah. Wait, no, 10 times was, faster than him. If it was just him. cruising, it'd be less than Mach. Mach is speed of sound. I'm yeah. Stupid. But, like, that's the only one I believe, because it's pretty damn clear on, on what what it was. You know what I mean? Yeah, I... Every this other year... one that's taken by, like, a civilian, I don't believe, because... Yeah. Obviously, they recorded that on their phone, and they can go back and edit it later. Yeah. There have been Obviously. Of, there have been a lot of UFO, quote-unquote, sightings this year. Which well, is... quotes, but that one specifically, I'm like, okay, this is fishy. You this know, is like, my... the, the, this, is, this is the only one that I'm like, okay, this could be true. This is my opinion on it. Um, Ever since the invention of the UFO, and not the UFO, ever since the invention of the cell phone camera, the sightings of UFOs... Sasquatch and the Loch Ness Monster have dropped exponentially because, like, you can just take a picture. But yeah, I, my opinion on aliens is that it is almost mathematically inevitable that there are other intelligent life forms out in the universe. Exactly. There is a damn near, damn near infinite number of planets, and I cannot, in my brain, calculate how we are the we would be the only intelligent life form. Because there's no way. Yeah. There's there is zero chance that we are the only ones. It, and if we aren't, then we are probably the least developed out of all of them. Yeah, my assumption is that you gotta you gotta understand when our universe when our solar system formed. It, like it was pretty late into the life into the lifespan of the actual cosmos. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Earth only, what, like, a couple billion? It's only, years. like, five billion something years old. Yeah, that's, on a cosmic scale, that's nothing. And that's you're like, nothing. Yeah, so my assumption is that at some point or another, we're never, I yeah, don't think... it's crazy, because our sun is only 4.6 billion years old, while our Earth is 4.5 yeah. billion years old. Like, we have just started. Yeah, on a cosmic scale, of course. On a cosmic scale, that, that's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's just short. That's short. That's very short. Because the, the problem with where we are right now scientifically is that if we want to go to another planet that is habitable, like, without any changes or terraforming, yeah. we would have to crack faster than light travel. But the problem is, is that how, this is how I understand it. If you go... 100 if you go to the speed of light you develop you create a black hole that is my understanding yeah the only reason light doesn't do it is because light photons are so small that it wouldn't matter yeah light has no weight it's just yeah it's energy. it's not like an object you can grab it's more of like a it's more like the air kind of but not really yeah cool. like you can't you can't just touch oxygen right now if you wanted to well, you can, but you can't. You can, but you can't like feel it. Yeah, Pho it photons is just energy. It's just it's it's just pure energy. So if okay, in the infinite number, almost infinite number of planets, I am guessing that at some point, some uh, intelligent life has created either like almost like very close to fast fast speed of light or speed of light travel. The yeah. problem is, is that if we want to catch up with how fast the planets are moving, we would have to go double, triple speed of light. We would have to go more than that because, remember, the universe is expanding, and as it expands, it gets faster. Like, okay, okay, let's get into the topic of the universe expanding, so that way they can understand why we have to go quicker than the speed of light to get to certain planets and galaxies, because they're moving away quicker than the speed of light. Because like light can't keep up with them because the universe is expanding but the universe is not expanding at a rate of speed it's actually the uh, it's actually if you were to calculate the expansion of the universe it would actually be the equation for frequency not speed i didn't know that I, yeah i'd crazy right my it's actually frequency it's the exact uh, it's like it's the inverse equation to frequency how my monkey brain understands it is that as the so expands, light so light travels at a frequency right yeah, yep 
and like we all know blue shift red shift if something's red shifting from us it's moving away if something's blue shifted it's, it's either away. coming closer or staying same distance mm -hmm. that's why we have galaxy clusters because they're blue shifted so they're just staying all in the same thing because they're gravitationally bound to one another I, you're learning a lot from me today. I am learning a lot. Um, this is Listen, my... I'm a big space nerd, okay? Yeah, I, I'm just a monkey history dude. I understand um, swords go clash clash. This is how I understand. So the Big Bang, it, that, how we assume the universe started is the Big Bang, and everything's yep. moving away from a central point. But From, from they... a fixated point. The, nothing's moving physically. It's the space between certain things that's expanding. Yes. We're, we're just staying still. How I understand it is that as gravity, as things move apart more, the space between them gets larger. Yeah, but affects... remember, the rate of, like, the rate of movement in between space gets faster and faster and faster. Yeah. So, eventually, galaxies are starting to move away quicker from us than the speed of light can actually catch up. Yeah. That's why we can't see 90% of the galaxies in our universe. Because they're already moving away too quick for light to reach there. Yeah, my assumption was that, like, as they move apart more, gravity, if the gravity, the gravitational forces between them affect each other less and less. So they can mm -hmm. just, they can start booking it. They can just keep going. It, it won't matter at a certain point. So the, the point of this whole thing is that if we want to catch up and explore these other, we basically have to invent hyperdrives. Basically. Like, we would have to in we would have to invent hyperdrives, but even at a certain point in time, if we do live past that, those will also be so ineffective because we would just have to keep up with the universe. We're not keeping up with our civilizations at at that point. We're just keeping up with the universe. Yeah, which is impossible. If if we're talking about in our own galaxy and we find advanced civilizations within our own galaxy, that's easier. We can we can do that. Yeah. We can not, do that. Not with the tech but we have. Outside? Yeah. No. There is a galaxy that is getting closer to us. which It's Andromeda, and we're yeah. bound to we make a collision course in three million years. Yeah, don't have anxiety not over Not in our it. lifetime, which yeah, is do sad. Do not have anxiety that over that. You will be dead that. long before. You'll be dead long before that happens. Humans will probably be extinct long before that happens, so don't worry about oh, it. Oh, no. Like, within two to three million years, the sun is supposed to get big enough to wipe out life on planet earth so yeah we just we don't have to worry about that not our problem we don't have to worry about that we we're fine it is not our we'll, problem we'll be dead by then yeah your great 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 100 great great yeah. grandchildren yeah, great, great won't even be able to see it great to the power of like a thousand we don't yeah. they they won't even be able to get to see it so my yeah like i said i think another aliens... thing about like expansion of the universe i wanted to mention this if you were to travel in a circle around the universe it would be impossible because like we said the universe is expanding and as it keeps expanding the frequency of expansion gets faster and faster so eventually whatever speed you're going at even if it's the speed of light you will never be able to complete that full circle yeah. if anything you'll actually start going kind of backwards yeah, because it just keeps getting faster and faster. It just keeps going and going. But, do not despair. I assume that somewhere out there, a civilization is more advanced than us. I can't imagine we are the... Way only. more advanced than us. I can't and imagine. if they are, they probably have already found us, because math ma mathematically speaking, it's possible. Yeah, they've found us. Maybe they don't have a way to contact us. And I but assume... They, but they know of us. I assume they're trying to. Like, my assumption is that... Like, this genuinely, happen. like, trying to make communications, be like, hey, who are you? Yeah. My assumption is that we're not the Apex, and somewhere there is a civilization that has developed the technology that you need to do faster travel. than light travel. Like, somehow probably. they break They're laws. probably, like, a Type 1 civilization, though. We're not know. even a Type 1 yet. I don't know what that is way is that a star trek way thing? far okay so a type one is that civilization a star trek no it's not it's like an actual classification of civilizations really okay y yo yeah so a type one civilization no is we're, we're a type one a those that rely on primitive no, we're not. Sources such no as fire. we're not no type one You're not type one not this at is all what I, this is what i found type one that rely on primitive energy sources such as fire coal and oil 
and are able to harness not advantage. no no as in like space buddy oh. i know what you're talking about but you don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> So space, able to access like, all the energy talking... available on its planet and store it, it for consumption. I so think. we're not, no. not at all. It's called the car. So because the whole planet, a type two is the whole solar system. A type three is they a can, galaxy. Yeah, they, they can harness is the power galaxy. of a star. Is what I found. Exactly. And yep. then the third would be. And then it's and then third is galaxy. Fourth is galaxy cluster. Fifth is like beyond that. This is like universe. Interesting, yeah. So we would be seventh is immortality. We're like a point five. Yeah, we're like maybe point five, point six. We're not there yet. Interesting. And they're probably already there, if not then some. So So we got Um, a long way to go. Just don't have anxiety over this. Aliens are not coming to hunt us down, and even if they are, you won't be able to do anything about it. So just. Live exactly. You'll probably be evaporated like that, so it, don't even worry about it. It won't be pain. It won't be painful. It'll probably be painless. Live your life. Do your, do your stuff. Do your thing. Listen to this podcast. Like and subscribe. Exactly. Um, we good? But that's that's all I have, and I love that side tangent. Yeah, I I think it's gonna. What's ended up gonna happening is that I'm gonna talk about history for like half an hour. You're gonna talk about space for half an hour, and that's just gonna be the podcast. And that's the podcast. All right. Um, but, 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 I do have a topic for one of the um, more on the history podcast episodes, and I think you're gonna love it very much, Sevron. That's good. I'm, I'm excited. Um, uh, next episode on the CSS Hunley. It's already written. Should be able to get it out sooner than a month. Hopefully. I'm still sorry. Rumbly's probably not. Uh, not at all. No. All right. Uh, y'all have a good day. All right. See you next time. Yep. Bye.